Welcome back. This week we're going to go with Kelly Gallup's uh, Wooly Tips Up. This is a phenomenal crayfish pattern. Um, we'll explain it a little bit more as we get going as to why it acts the way it does. But uh, it's a very unique pattern. Um, it has some foam popper corks in the back, so the back hook always seems like it wants to stand up and it does a really good job imitating a crayfish. Um, but we'll get right into the time here. We're going to do some tan today because, well, that's the one that I have materials for. We've been on a bit of a tying spree here lately. And the supplies are starting to dwindle a decent amount, but that's all right. We've got some stuff coming in. So we're just going with a tan marabou plume, and we're going to run that right, you know, same as always, measure it out, length of the hook, and we're going to grab some copper flashaboo. And we'll run this, same as always, you know, you got the... Four strands on each side, for my side, for the camera side, and we'll take another marabou plume, and I'm actually going to wet this one a little bit, it's a little wispy, and right at the same length uh, if you want to, just a little bit longer. And we'll get that tied in real quick. And we're gonna normally what we do with these, um, we keep the plumes in for bulk, but with this fly, we're not going to. And I actually probably got those a little bit longer than what I should have. I probably let those go a little bit further than what I should have, but we should be okay. Um, this is the unique thing about this fly. So we're just going to take these um, little foam poppers, like I was saying earlier. I, I just buy them in white, um, and then I color them up with a marker. But here's what we're working with. Just these little foam poppers, and hopefully I don't mess up because these are my last two so given that I don't mess up we should have the uh, we should have this video up this week but just run your bodkin through that and measure this out set this right to the side pretty good now before we set that in there the whole way we're just going to take a little bit of glue you don't need a whole lot just a quick dab on there and it's going to be fine so we're going to take this right back to where we start touching the marabou tail so there you have it Phone decided to ring a little bit. Um, and let's just half hitch this real quick because we want this out of our way. I'll throw this back on. All distracted here. Tie your thread back on. And we're going to go with just some uh, Grizzly variant schlopping. This is tan black. Um, I use this stuff on... I, I, I prefer this stuff. I mean, I really like the way that it looks. I like the... I just like the natural barring that it has. And we're going to go ahead and just tie that in. And 
and give this a half hitch. And we'll see if this is going to cooperate. Just run this right forward. You can kind of go one wrap right on top of the next. I mean, you don't have to really advance this too far forward like you normally would with, you know, I mean, if we were wrapping like a slopping body or something like that, like you'll see on the front hook that we do. Um, we'll just get, you know, maybe five or six turns in there. And we'll go ahead and tie this off. And cut it. I would have liked that to have been a little bit shorter. But it will work. Kind of like everything to have a progression as we go from the back to the front. But I think this is going to work out just fine. So the next thing we're going to do is just take our second popper and we're going to run our bodkin through here again. Try and find the center as best I can. And perfect. Just work that right through there. Uh, we'll build up a little bit of a thread base and go ahead and half hitch. Cut the thread, get some glue down. Then we're going to work this second popper right through. Go ahead and match it up and push it right back to where, you know, I mean, don't cram it in there, but don't leave a huge gap either. Um, that way this thing kind of has a, the you know, I mean, you're not compressing or you're not hampering the slopping feathers to where they can still move. I mean, if I pushed it too far forward, there wouldn't be any freedom for this stuff to move. Um, and it would just, it would look like it would be all matted back. So leave it a little bit, leave a little bit of space there. And then we're going to tie in our thread again. We're going to go with the second slop and feather these are some pretty long feathers here but this is going to work out good go ahead and give this a half hitch and you really don't have to throw this in the cradle. I mean, we could probably work this just by hand, but we're gonna run the cradle through it. And this is some really wispy, this is a wispy feather here. We're gonna have to spend some time picking this out and getting it to lay back for us, but we're gonna try and get about four to five wraps. And this is a little bit longer than what I would like it, but I think it's going to work. A lot of this is going to be not really covered up, but you'll see once we get the front hook in and we get our skirt going, I mean, a lot of it's going to be, it, it's not going to look as free as what it does right now. And, boy, I could have pushed that just a little bit further further forward or further backwards with that back popper could have given myself a little bit more room to work with this is a Daiichi 2461 size 2 and as you can see I mean it's just about the perfect length for these poppers and we'll just run this one more here. I know this is taking a little bit longer, but I'm going to try not to not to capture too much of this. 
I got a little bit close to the front, but there we go. And we got the crisis averted there. Now we're just going to go right back over this. We're going to kind of preen this stuff back. And work your way back over top of it. That way you don't get a tooth in there. And it just chews it up. Wind up losing, losing your front feather. So we can go ahead and whip finish this. And our back hook is done. So that one's a little bit longer than what I would like it, but it will work. We'll take our marker and just touch this thread up a little bit. And kind of dull out that white some. probably three strands of this copper flasher boot and we're just going to double this up and take it right back to you know right around where your two poppers are connected it doesn't have to be exact I mean it's just a ballpark estimate where I normally go with them and same as the tail you know one on my side one on the camera side and we'll just measure these out pretty close to the ones on my side and that looks pretty good it's just some internal flash I got one that's not wanting to cooperate down here get that out of the way we'll just work this back and then for our skirt we're going to take a marabou and a marabou plume and we're going to palmer this so we're just going to find a nice wispy plume and get that tied in and this is just just to create a skirt just to just to cover up the connection between the front and back hook Down in there, grab our pliers. We have a pretty weak tip on this one, so I'm going to really try not to put too much tension on this and bust this up. But, uh, just take this, you know, I mean, one wrap right in front of the next. I mean, you've seen, seen me run these space style or palmered marabou plumes before. And just kind of pick this out. It broke right at the end on me. Luckily, I had that. Luckily, I had everything secured with thread. But there we go. Just kind of run through here with your bodkin. Pick this out a little bit and then preen it back. And run your thread right back over top of it. And you'll see once we get done with this here, is this just covers up your connection. You can see, I mean, you have a nice it looks like one fly. You know, I mean, you can hardly see your connection or anything. And this does give a little bit more motion, you know, these, the spay wrapped uh, or palmered marabou, it just breathes in the water a little bit better. 
So next we're going to take a piece of wire here. sized wire nothing nothing too fancy and then we're going to take some I think this is root beer it might be brown I'm not really certain either way they're about the same color when you see them on a card anyhow uh, this is just some regular estaz and we're going to tie this in and this is going to be our body and work that right to the front that wire that we tied in is going to capture our slopping. That's going to be what we use to counter wrap it. And go ahead and get, you know, a turn or two in, give us a stretch. And then as you work your way to the front, every fourth or fifth, however many you decide, just give this a quick pull. I'm actually going to back that off one because. We still want to get some rubber legs in here and have room for the head. Uh, you little... <laughs> I almost had to edit. There we go. So we'll get this out of our way. Now the original one, um, when when Kelly did this, he used the, uh, the chenille and he would just figure out the head and you know kind of like a circus peanut style or something like that but then he went with the the ram's wool for the for the head afterwards that's the one we're going to do today we're not going to do the um estaz figure eight head so we're going to take one more piece or one more slopping feather and get this tied in get that trimmed up Get that tied in and secure. Half inch. And then grab your hackle pliers. Make sure we're still, yeah, we look like we're in focus pretty well. And go ahead and spin this to the back. Let's see if I can get one more in there. That looks pretty good. And clean this up just kind of run your fingers through there get these ones um, get these ones that you know this grizzly variant tends to be a little webbier and it seems to stick together a little bit more than you know your normal slopping so just kind of run your fingers through there and that will reduce how much you trap when you counter wrap this with your wire and we're just going to rip this right through here like we do on most most of the other ones just kind of shimmy this through try not to trap too much and boom we're good um, grab my junk scissors trim up our wire more excess back there and see we have a nice nice webby slop and feather ideally this this one right here would be longer than this one in the back but um, kind of got a little bit short on picking that one out but you know just for reference some of you want those a little bit longer uh, these legs, I just got these in the other day. These are uh, pumpkin olive with some black flake in them. Really cool looking. I, mean, I think these are pretty new. But uh, I really like the way these look. doesn't really matter. You can run tan. You can run whichever color you want on these. But Like I said, just got these in. And I want to give them a look. I think they look pretty neat. But the color is entirely up to you. So we have three of these and we just tie those in and we're going to go ahead and trim this right now. 
pull down and release. Looks good. And we'll find a straw that I'm going to drop on the ground. And grab another one. Just go ahead and cover that up. That way all of your materials out of the way. You have plenty of room to work. And just give a couple quick turns around these eyes here. Now I'm going to zip through when we're tying while we're tying in um, the wool and then we'll go ahead and pick it up once we get everything tied in. But there you have it. As you can see, um, I don't really, I probably left that collar a little bit longer than what it should have been, but um, I don't really cut. I leave this a little bit more rounded on the head than like I do um, with the boogeyman, the kitty. Um, what else do we got with a wool head? But yeah, I mean, especially those two. I mean, those are more of a sculpting looking pattern you know this one you know you want it to be you know more of a crayfish imitation so I mean it does have the more rounded on the bottom I don't really cut it flush as much as I do the other ones my remote doesn't want to work for me here there we go but that is it that is Kelly Gallup's woolly tips up um, as always questions comments uh, shoot them to me and I'll get back to you but uh, thanks again, and we will catch you next week.